Hi, I'm Ricky, I'm South African. I just graduated from the Royal College of Art in London and I'm the designer of Febrisol. I don't remember when I first heard about HIV or when I was first taught about safe sex. In privileged, educated circles in South Africa like the one I grew up in, most people of my generation are similar. We just sort of knew what it was, what the risks were and how to protect ourselves. It was a fact of life. Growing up, the country was the epicenter of the HIV epidemic. Our president, Thabo Mbeki, and health minister, Mantu Shabalala, didn't believe HIV causes AIDS. In fact, they believed potatoes, garlic, and beetroot were more effective than antiretrovirals. There were government-provided condoms freely available in public toilets and billboards on the highway promoting safe sex. That is to say, the conversation surrounding HIV was inescapable. Two presidents and three health ministers on, we still have the heaviest HIV burden in the world. That said, we've made strides in treatment policy and research, but we still have a long way to go. To give you an idea, 37.9 million people globally are living with HIV. 70% in developing countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, 20% in South Africa. Curbing the epidemic requires getting patients on treatment and keeping them on treatment. The goal being viral suppression, which means that they can live long and healthy lives, that the virus is undetectable in their system, and most importantly, that the virus can't be transmitted. I am, by nature, a problem solver, and the HIV crisis is a problem I want to be a part of solving. But I'm not an epidemiologist, and unfortunately for my Jewish parents, the closest I get to a medical degree is my unwavering dedication to 16 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. But my practice as a designer is predicated on the belief that interdisciplinary thinking and human-centered design have the potential to change behavior and solve some of the world's most pressing problems, even the HIV crisis. So after a lot of consultations with doctors and public health specialists, what caught my attention was the discussion about adherence. Once HIV positive patients are on medication, why is it so hard to keep them on medication? There are a number of reasons, like the stigma that exists around HIV to patients living in remote areas where it's very challenging to renew a monthly prescription. But what I related to most was how difficult it is to remember to take a pill at the same time every day for your whole life. And this is what's required to achieve viral suppression. I'm not on ARVs, but I do take medication daily. I have a reminder on my phone and leave my pills next to my contact lenses so I'm reminded when I'm getting dressed in the morning. And I still forget. Or worse, I take my pills, I don't check off the reminder, and I'm left wondering if I did or didn't in fact remember to take them in the first place. There are a number of effective interventions already on the market which help people adhere to daily medication. The most obvious are those Monday to Sunday pill boxes we associate with our grandparents. But they're cumbersome and they require a patient or carer to decant medication every week. Then there are the more high-tech options like blister packaging or pill pack, both of which use daily tracking to increase adherence. Unfortunately, while effective, these options are expensive and just aren't viable in a developing world context. As a designer, I specialize in helping people change their behavior, build habits, and make better choices. So I asked myself, is there a way to apply the tracking technique which we know works and combine it with a more design-centered behavioral change approach? Could I create a system that could help increase treatment adherence to antiretrovirals specifically for the developing world? Before I began, I needed to be aware of the constraints. My solution had to be cheap enough to be implemented in a developing country. It couldn't be an app or digital because not everyone in the developing world has a smartphone and even if they did, your phone isn't always with you when you take your medication. It also needed to be simple. So simple, in fact, that it required little to no onboarding education. It also needed to be accessible enough so that individuals with very low levels of literacy could use it. One of the products on the market is the Joseph Joseph dot bottle. After every bottle of water you drink, you click the mechanism on the lid to reveal a dot. The goal is to drink four dots a day. I considered adapting it to a universal lid for a pill bottle, but I found the mechanism would just be too ex expensive to produce even at scale. I considered making a new bottle with a window and labeling it with the weeks so that a patient could see their progress, but this wasn't accurate and didn't provide immediate enough feedback to achieve the desired effect. 
So I backtracked and I started by using what I already know works in numerous cultural contexts. But I took away what I knew wasn't viable in the developing world. I was left with the daily tracking of the oral contraceptive, a system that has helped women adhere to the pill since the 50s. But I removed the blister packaging. From behavioral economic studies, we know that individuals are more likely to respond to positive reinforcement than criticism or punishment. So I knew that I wanted patients to feel a sense of accomplishment once they had taken their medication. I added in a tick or a check as the Americans call it, a universal symbol for achieving a goal and used green, a color generally associated with positive reinforcement and moving forward. But how does the patient mark off the days? Well, I didn't like the idea of peeling off a sticker for each day because it just seemed finicky and wasteful. I also didn't like the idea of ticking off the days with a pen because what happens if you can't find your pen? I looked into different options and found that scratch cards are prolific, even in the developing world. They also have an aspect of gamification and playfulness to them. Using a scratch card meant that the patient didn't need any auxiliary tools. They could just mark off the day with their fingernail. I also added in an adhesive backing so that the tracker would always be with the medication. The theory says that to create a habit you need a cue, an action and a reward. Now using Febrisol, which is what I call it, the patient sees their medication, the cue, takes the pill and scratches off the day's metallic coating, the action, and is rewarded by revealing a tick, providing positive reinforcement. They can also see at a glance whether or not they have taken their medication on any given day. While Febrisol was originally designed to increase adherence to antiretrovirals in the developing world, it can also be added to any medical packaging and can be used to increase adherence to medications like those used in the prevention of malaria, as well as to treat TB, heart disease, mental health, diabetes, and many more chronic conditions. This is of course just the beginning of the project. I'm still interested in how the design can be adapted for people who take multiple medications or take medication multiple times a day. We also don't know how COVID-19 or pandemics like it will evolve and what role treatment adherence will play in their management and control. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we are not short on problems. But if the graduates of 2020 have taught us anything, it's that design has the potential to be a part of the solution. Thank you.